Hark, fair guest in waiting. From the 26th of February to the 3rd of March in Trinidad and Tobago, the Film and Folklore Festival shall unfold its tapestry of magic in the realm of cinematic wonders. Join us for an ethereal soiree where folklore and love shall intertwine as twills come alive under a moonlit sky with Caribbean cinema and intellectual discussions as well as camp folklore. Your esteemed presence is the key to unlocking this spellbinding journey. So be there as we embark on a timeless celebration of love and folklore united in the dance of dreams. The enchantment awaits. The enchantment most definitely awaits as we get ready for the Film and Folklore Festival. Six, year six, we're celebrating folklore in love. This morning, joining me via Zoom, or joining us rather via Zoom, is Liz Lenjo. She's the founder of My IP Legal Studio Kenya and the chair of the Copyright Tribunal. And she's going to be one of the facilitators inside the IP law and film discussions happening, not today, but tomorrow. She joins us via Zoom this morning. Good morning to you, Liz. Good morning. How are you? So far, so good. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. It's very hot in Kenya right now. <laughs> ah, well, we are we are just getting our day started, but I'm sure it will get as hot as it is in Kenya <laughs> soon enough. Um, but I want to jump into the into the conversation one time. Tell us about the importance of understanding IP and law when it comes to film. So, um, you know, film is generally a baby of our ideas, right? It's about mm -hmm. uh, the thoughts that we have, the creativity in our minds and putting them to life. So intellectual property becomes very important because it's the area of law, or the body of law that helps you now turn these ideas into an asset. You turn it into a property. So it's really important then to understand what intellectual property law uh, means in the film space. It's really important to understand what you need to do as a creative to ensure then that you protect yourself, you protect the expression of these ideas. And, you know, one of the most common um, misunderstandings is that intellectual protects the ideas, but it protects the, it, it's the expressions of the idea. So everyone can have an idea. Um, you know, everyone can have a concept. It's a very raw, uh, you know, format. So, but the minute you express it, you either write it down, you record it, um, you perform it, then it automatically now gets that protection. So it has to move uh, from the mind into, uh, you know, something tangible. So for film, it will be that script. It will be that um, recording of the film. You know, it will be in the performance. Uh, it will be in the set design, for example. So there are so many elements that, you know, are, are, you know we'll be talking about to shed light uh, to filmmakers to understand where their rights lie and how then they can also protect themselves and how they can make money. Because at the end of the day, this is a livelihood. So again, it's also about how do you make money from your talent, from this expression of ideas that you create. Most definitely. And it's very interesting because, you know, when, when it comes to film in particular, we have a collaborative effort because you have people who are doing the filming, the writing, you have people doing the sound, and all of these specific things have their own intellectual property. Am I correct? Yes, you're very right. Um, you know, just like I said, you know, um, let's just take it from the top. I'm a filmmaker, uh, maybe I'm a producer, and I need a script. And let's say you, Rokas, are a very good uh, script writer. So I, have to, I come to you and I say, hey, Rokas, I want us to do a film. Um, I think I read your book and I'd love us to turn it into a film. And can you turn it into a script? So already there, the script itself will be a literary wax, which is protected by copyright. Um, so then we have to discuss how do you work with me? Who retains the control or the ownership sort of thing. So already you as a script writer have some copyright in it. The minute I put in some money, then some rights also now come to me in regards to the recording. 
Right. Then, you know, we want to set up, set the scene, for example, uh, we have a beautiful living room, uh, some paintings and whatnot. So like, for example, the painting behind me, uh, you know, that's someone intellectual property. So I have to clear those rights. Uh, I'm going to hire a set designer as well. Uh, I have to, you know, give them a contract that shows that I hired them. And then they have to confirm the authenticity of all the pieces they'll bring together on set. Um, so they'll be in charge to make sure that I clear those rights so that so nobody comes and tells me, oh, you're in, you're infringing on my copyright or on my trademark and all things like that. Uh, you know, you bring in the actors, you're bringing in them because of their performance, the way they perform. So you have to get a performance contract with them, an actor's agreement and clear all those rights, clear their image rights to be able to, uh, you know, showcase the recordings or the film in cinemas on different platforms. Uh, you know, you decide to use music on the set. Um, you know, maybe you'll need someone to score music afresh, then you have to hire someone, give them a contract where now you, uh, you know, get this music that is created specifically for your film to become your property. So that will be mm -hmm. done through a contract by a work for hire, right? If it's an already existing uh, piece of music, for example, then you have to make sure you get the synchronization licenses for that or the mechanical rights agreements around now the music in the film. So you can see there's so much in terms of other third party intellectual property that also has to be cleared and understood. Yeah. Liz, thank you so much for sharing that. There is so much that we definitely do need to learn when it comes to intellectual property and the industry as a whole. Now tell us tomorrow at the seminar, my mate, at the seminar, the what are the, the <laughs> workshop rather, what are the key takeaways you would like participants to leave with? I think definitely the the emphasis on believing in, in your intellectual property is one of the key takeaways I will be talking about. Um, we'll be talking about, um, you know, the importance of protecting your intellectual property, uh, why you need to register, you know, your copyrights, your trademarks, why you need to clear third party rights. Um, and then we'll also be talking about the importance of understanding contracts. You know, don't sign a contract without understanding what it provides for, without, mm -hmm. um, you know, understanding what it means for your business and what does it mean in terms of your livelihood. So contracts, again, will be a good emphasis. And something else we'll be talking about is, uh, you know, traditional knowledge and cultural expressions and folklore and how that impacts also the film industry. Um, you know, traditional knowledge, cultural expressions is now an emerging area of intellectual property rights where we are making sure that communities also benefit from these folklore and ex cultural expressions and traditional knowledge um, and it, you know they make you know they are part of it because this is their property so we'll also be talking about that and how this emerging area is impacting the film space and how filmmakers can be also equipped to ensure that they protect their productions and they're never you know um, in, find themselves in a situation where they are being stopped uh, from you know distributing their film because they did not clear certain intellectual property rights. So those are some of the key takeaways that they, we will be emphasizing on tomorrow. Liz, I must jump back in here because I'm very, I got very curious when you mentioned the, especially the folklore stuff, right? I know that you did a paper on, on being inspired versus being exploited. When it comes to things like, like folklore especially, how do we tell the difference between when something is inspiring you versus when you're actually stealing an idea? Well, with, with copyright especially, we're always talking about that substantial copying, that, um, you know, maybe 80% of the script is so similar that you know that this is a story from a certain community or this is a story from somebody's book uh, or even somebody's life. So it's it's usually about that substantial similarity. Uh, and the minute you're able to prove that, then automatically um, you can show that um, there was some, you know, infringement, that there was some exploitation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes people hide behind the word inspiration but you will always tell when someone has generally just you know handpicked or copy pasted from someone else's um, story or creativity and then they just try to change a few things so the minute you can establish substantial similarity then you're home and dry in terms of proving that there was an exploitation that occurred fantastic tell me about about before we wrap just tell me a little bit of some of the common challenges that you've seen in your years of experience uh between let's say even let's we could start with kenya and we can go globally when it comes to intellectual property what are some of the challenges and the things that you think people don't quite get but they need to in order to be able to protect themselves i think the first thing uh, and it's i think a global challenge in the creative sector 
Um, creatives tend to think that they don't need lawyers. They think that lawyers are expensive. So you find that they try to be one-man shows. They want to do everything. They want to draft their contracts. They want to, um, you know, be the ones to find the talent. They want to be the producer. They want to find the music. You know, they want to do everything. And you can't do everything. You can't be a one-man show. You need a team. So, and, and legal is one of them because right now, even to commercialize a film, you know, um, there are a lot of legal compliance issues that you must, uh, you know, ensure that you have cleared. Um, without them, then you cannot do that. So you need a competent lawyer to help you with that. Uh, I think secondly is also the lack of belief in our ideas, in our talent. You'll find that most creatives will be like, oh, you know, I didn't think it would make it, so I didn't register my, my intellectual property. I didn't think it was important. Um, and then later on, they lose a deal because they did not register. They did not show the world or, or their country that this is actually my work. And, you know, Generally, we, we always assert, um, you know, value to land, for example, more than intangible assets. So when you see when you buy a piece of land, you always ensure you get that title deed. And what intellectual property law does is ensures that now this intangible asset also grants you a title through those registrations. So it could be copyright, it could be trademark, it could be design. So get those, those registrations done. It's really important. And then thirdly, which is really important, is the power of negotiation. A contract mm. is about meeting of minds. So the minute you do not negotiate a contract, that's what a hostile takeover. It means that you have to understand that you have a power to negotiate. Do not enter into a contract that is oppressing you. And the minute as a creative you feel oppressed, walk away from that deal. It's going to be very painful. It is going to be very stressful for your production or even for your well-being, even for the rights that you hold. You might just end up losing everything. So always uh, read that contract, have um, you know a lawyer with you. And I, I emphasize an intellectual property lawyer who understands the business, the film business, to help you through that contract and understand what it is you're signing. Because you know, unfortunately, most of our creatives sign really bad deals. And then the next thing, they'll, they'll be crying and shedding tears on social media and telling people how so-and-so give them a really bad deal. But it's because they did not do the right thing. So those are like the three top um, challenges we see in the industry. Thank you so much for sharing that, Liz, and thank you for joining us this morning on the Now Morning Show. Looking forward to having you hopefully on again soon so we can continue this critical conversation. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's been our pleasure. Liz Lanjo, facilitator, looking forward to, of course, the Film and Folklore Festival, which starts today. So if you haven't gotten any information yet, go and check it out on their website. And make sure that you stay tuned as well, because we've got more coming up for you on the Now Morning Show right after this break.